Hi, my name is Craig Brown, and for the last two and a half years or so, I've been the project lead for the Health Adapt project for Vancouver Coastal Health, Fraser Health, Health Emergency Management BC, and Facilities Management. We're based in the unceded traditional homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil Waututh Nations in Vancouver. And this project is kind of unique in that we've got four partners that came together to apply for the Health Adapt funding knowing that we needed to take a coordinated approach to climate change and health adaptation in the region. Our project spans two very large health authorities in British Columbia. It's Fraser Health and Vancouver Coastal Health. The health authorities in British Columbia provide services, you know, ranging from public health and population health, but to operating acute care facilities, long-term care, and many, many other activities and services. So our project has primarily focused on public health and population health, as well as emergency management focus and the focus on a variety of facilities into the project. Again, to take a more kind of holistic view of climate change and health adaptation. Throughout the project engaged a number of internal stakeholders. These are folks primarily in decision-making roles, but also including frontline staff, people who interact with clients, with uh, populations that experience greater risk, etc. And what we've done is we've really tried to create an understanding of vulnerability and capacity that was informed by both our staff's experience and also the experience of the community organizations, local governments, regional governments that we engage throughout the project. You know, our project has two primary deliverables, a vulnerability and capacity assessment, and then a strategic plan. And for both of those, we knew that we needed to, again, engage broadly across our staff, as well as with our partners in the community and the populations that we serve. So our vulnerability and capacity assessment, which outlined the hazards we're exposed to, uh, the extent to which we're susceptible to impacts from those exposures and the adaptive capacity that the health authority has, that the communities have, and that the kind of field of practice has, and bringing that all together into a kind of understanding of vulnerability and capacity in our health regions. I think that's been a big success because we now have an answer to the question of how is climate change going to affect population health and the health system in these two health regions and what are we already doing about it? How vulnerable are we? Because we know that vulnerability is a composite of susceptibility and preparedness. I think another of the successes was working with Health Emergency Management BC and Facilities Management and Operations because we could then broaden our picture, deepen our understanding of vulnerability in our health region. Some of the challenges of the project have involved, well, obviously working through a pandemic. It's become a lot more difficult to get people's time to do the engagement, but we found that doing remote engagement, virtual engagement, has actually opened up probably more doors than it closed. We've also seen that COVID taught the health authorities that they can take quick, decisive action on important problems and be really successful. So there's a bit of confidence that has come with the COVID challenge in addition to those capacity constraints. I think another challenge with a project like ours is, yes, we have four project partners, but the two health authorities cover just such a massive geographic range, a variety of communities, both urban and rural, remote, indigenous communities. And so we've had to take that into account. We can't just come up with a a high-level statement summarizing vulnerability, for example, very easily. Knowing our role has been another challenge. Uh, what exactly are the services that we provide? How do those contribute to climate resilience in our communities that we serve? And just kind of clarifying some of that has been one of the both challenges but also a big opportunity and increasingly a success. The collaborations and the relationships that we've built through this project that's been really one of the most heartening aspects of this and I think that it's also the key to success going forward. The Health Canada funding has been extremely important for our project. We were lucky enough to, well, secure my positions. We were also able to access some additional funds through Health Canada's Health Adapt program that enabled us to do additional engagement with our Indigenous communities in the Central Coast region of British Columbia. We were able to develop infographics, we developed a set of climate vulnerability maps through multiple iterations that relied on engagement from all sorts of experts and knowledge users. And we were also able to get some support with doing our, our engagement work because 
This project uh, was large and those additional funds allowed us to deepen our impact, broaden our scope. I think that our project already has had a positive influence on our jurisdiction. Our project has enabled us to show some of that leadership, building a project website, being at more of the events, hosting our own engagement events about climate change and health adaptation has really kind of put us on the map and signaled to all of those other partners, community-based organizations, local regional governments, First Nations, that we're here. We are sorting out our understanding of our vulnerabilities and our capacities and we're taking action. And I think that the heat dome, for example, in July of 2021, the unprecedented extreme heat event that struck British Columbia, it, it allowed us to mobilize quickly during the response, forming partnerships with emergency operations centers being led by local governments, for example. It also gave us an opportunity to do some very rapid surveillance work on the health impacts of that event and to share those with our partners and internally to guide decision making. And so we hope to really deepen this legacy as we go forward. And very luckily, we were able to, uh, through the proof of concept that the Health Adapt program allowed us to pursue, we've now created a full-time position of a climate change and health lead for Vancouver Coastal Health. Fraser Health is following suit and there'll no doubt be a greater expansion of this team in the coming years. So this project has really set us up for a deep and sustained commitment to climate change and health adaptation for two of the largest health authorities in Canada. This means that we're now able to contribute to the community of practice that is really emerging and that we want other health authorities to know. This, this work is challenging, it's extremely important, it's hard, and Health Canada is going to be there to support you through this work. We've been very thankful to have the support of Health Canada and we look forward to seeing this community of practice develop into the future.